Hello, hello! Welcome to the stream! David Snowpick here from Snowpick Games. I can see Ricardo rocking a, a, what looks like monk robes and some sweet braids. Ben Stanley in the jester clothes and I think long hair behind a centurion helmet. That's pretty boss. My character's boring. I got just a dude with a shirt and possibly no pants. <laughs> Either that or brown pants. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, welcome, everyone. How's everybody doing? How are your uh, projects going? Whatever you may be working on. I know we talked like a couple weeks ago about like game dev. There we go. New Year's resolutions. How's everybody's uh, game dev plans for the new year going? Mine have been going okay. Although I was really planning to do like way more uh, VR dev this year and have not managed to pull that off yet. Let me see if I can get the overlay going. Uh, wait, no, this is wrong. There we go. Now it's got the Discord thing. And do you guys see your characters? Let me know. <laughs> Hopefully. Uh, so while I'm waiting to hear about your guys' projects, uh, I'll just give you guys some updates since the last stream. Last stream, we were working on uh, SG Physics 2D, which is my deterministic physics engine for Godot. And I don't know, man. That was that was one of the most embarrassing streams I think I've ever done. You guys got to watch me struggle with math for two hours, <laughs> which, okay, so it was good because you guys helped me with the math. And I don't know, I probably would have figured out it eventually, but it was it was good. You guys gave me a ton of help and that was awesome. But I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to put myself through that kind of public humiliation again. The, the really good news is, though... Um, the, all the problems, all of the things I mentioned last stream, like we solved all those problems. Uh, the physics engine is is looking great. What does Ben Stanley say? Oh, he sees them. Cool. You're just learning the, the Godot engine. Cool. This is, uh, I don't know, this is probably a decent stream for someone who's who's just learning the Godot engine because we're going to be doing um, an editor plugin, which is a little bit less deep than like when we're working on a physics engine or, or doing like heavy netcode stuff. But welcome. Welcome to the stream. Um, yeah, like last time we were working on, uh, okay, this is just a thing I was talking about. I wanted to make it so you could, you couldn't ever have zero separation between colliding objects and the physics engine, which I did implement and found a ton of precision issues. Um, and that ended up solving a whole bunch of problems. The one that we were working on though, like the whole time, the whole stream was this one where we were having like an object colliding and then it was calculating a slide vector and due to precision issues, it was like calculating a vector that was not always completely parallel. It was sometimes pointing slightly towards the object, so you would get stuck because you just keep colliding. Ended up solving that by adding um, this safe margin thing, which I totally stole from Godot's physics engine. Uh, <laughs> I was making all these pictures like, wouldn't it be great if like we just always stayed a certain amount away from the colliding objects and I couldn't think of a way to do it. And then I looked in, in Godot's physics engine and found they had this like safe margin thing, which I totally ripped off and added. Anyway, physics engine is looking great. Uh, I think I'm probably going to do uh, uh, another alpha release sometime soon and, and hopefully you guys will try it and break it some more and find new things for me to fix. <laughs> Ben Stanley says he cannot wait for 4.x. Yeah, I was really excited that uh, the 4.0 alpha came out. Uh, when was that? That was on Monday. On Monday. Um, and I was my, my two ideas for this stream actually was like exploring Godot 4, the 4.0 alpha, or this uh, Godot add-on jam, which is a really sweet idea. Uh, some other... Uh, I'll say popular? It's hard to say like in the, in the Godot game dev community, like... Godot is so small that like what does popular even mean? But some popular uh, game dev streamers, Mr. Elliptic and Len Lencius, Len Lencius <laughs> set up this Godot add-on jam, uh, which is a brilliant idea. I really like wanted to participate, um, but I, I've just been so busy with stuff. I haven't had a chance to start my add-on. So that's what we're going to do on stream. We're going to start making a Godot editor add-on. Um, and it's a very, very simple idea I have. So we could maybe even pull it off in two hours. We'll see. Uh, but I haven't done any pre-work. I actually don't even know if the add-on is possible. So let me let me let me explain what this what what the idea is. Uh, and let me open up a Godot editor to. I don't know. Give me something to point at. Give you guys something to look at. So when I'm working on a WebXR game, like uh, here is this is not the right thing. This is some demo. 
I wanted to open no no not reload current project. I meant the the item right after that. Quit to project list. Thank you. So when I'm working on a WebXR project such as this toy racer, uh, and by the way, WebXR is like a um, a uh, uh, technology for making VR and AR experiences that run in HTML5. So the idea is. Uh, like if you have an Oculus Quest, like I have one sitting over there, uh, there's a browser, a web browser in it. You'd go to some web page, um, and then you'd get a button like enter VR. You hit that button, and then now you're in a fully immersive VR experience that is provided by the web page. Um, and the same goes for like smartphone AR. You, you browse to, to some uh, website. It has an enter AR button. You hit it, and then you can sort of like... Uh, the, the, the use case that everyone always talks about is you can put the furniture on like a furniture store in your room and, and look at it, again, provided by the web browser as opposed to, to some other app. Um, anyway, so when I'm, whenever I'm working on WebXR stuff, I will constantly forget to export uh, because I can't just run it from the browser or run it from Godot, although maybe I could. I actually haven't dug too deep into that because Godot does have a thing where like if I hit uh, run in HTML5, it will actually like start a little web browser and open it up here. The problem is that I need to open it up on my quest. I need to put on a headset and go to a whole other thing. Um, and I just constantly, constantly forget to hit export. I will do all this stuff. I'll save. I'll put on the headset. I'll reload the page and nothing will have changed. I'm like, what the heck? Nothing's changed. And then I'll go back like, oh, I forgot to export. And I'll export and then I'll put on the headset again and do the whole thing. Um, and someone else actually originally suggested this, uh, or actually they didn't really suggest it as so much as they like incredulous, incredulously, I don't know how to say that word out loud. I'll pick a different word. Uh, they, they were like uh, astonished that Godot did not have some sort of auto export feature. Like, I can't believe Godot doesn't have this auto export feature. You, like, this is what you need. Um, so uh, it actually seemed like a pretty good idea. I, I don't think it's ridiculous that Godot doesn't have one, but we're going to make an add-on an add for it. So the idea is every time you save, uh, you'll have some configured export or maybe exports, and it will just automatically export when you save. Simple. Uh, and that would be super useful for me um, doing WebXR stuff. I can imagine it might be useful in other cases, like um, where you're trying to test uh, maybe the release version of your game. So like when you run uh, by pressing the play button, which of course is going to launch a web browser, this isn't a good example. Uh, but when you're running like a normal game, um, oh, okay, no, this did actually run at normal. This did run at normal, it just doesn't do anything because <laughs> it's a VR game. But you, you press play in, in uh, the Godot editor and it's launching it with the exact same binary as the editor itself. So it will be the editor compiled with um, release debug. So that's like the compiler optimizations, but all of the debug code enabled and the tools and stuff. And maybe you need to test your game instead with the release export templates and um, you know having to go like, okay, I made my change, I've saved, and now I'm going to go over to uh, project export and then hit export project again and hit all these buttons. There's a lot of buttons you got to press. Uh, it might be kind of nice for for other sorts of games too to just have it automatically um, export when you save. Nothing else going on in chat. Okay, uh, does that sound like a good plan, guys? Should we do it if it's possible? <laughs> if it's not possible, I don't know. We'll come up with something else to do. We always find something fun to do. So uh, step one, let's uh, start making an add-on. Um, I guess we'll do it in this project. Why not? Uh, we'll we'll work on it within the the Toy Racer XR project. The first step to making an add-on is making a little directory to put it in. Ben Stanley says, "Hey, Snowbet Games, how is performance in Godot 3.4 versus 3.3? I'm on 3.3 right now. I don't think there's a big performance difference between 3.3 and 3.4. At least not in any of the things that I do. I didn't notice a difference." Um, trying to remember exactly what the differences are between 3.3 and 3.4. I'm already thinking about 3.5, to be honest. Um, I, I uh, not, in, not in this project, but for a lot of my projects, I'm custom compiling Godot, and I'm usually compiling from like the latest 3.x branch, which is what uh, 3.5 is going to be coming off of. Let's look at the 3.4 release notes. Uh, 
Yeah, 3.4 had a ton of feature additions. Um, 3.4 was actually the one where WebXR support was added originally, um, I think. Right? I thought so. I'm not finding WebXR in the release notes here. Um, maybe it wasn't 3.4 then. Maybe I'm thinking of a different version. No, it was this version. This one where we had... Okay, so like... Uh, 3.3.4 or something was going to happen, uh, but it had so much stuff that like uh, uh, Remy and the maintainers decided to make it a whole new minor version, so then it became 3.4, I think. Yeah, I think so. Um, let's see if there's any performance things mentioned here. Some physics performance stuff. Hey, RC! Welcome to the stream! Hey, did you see you were mentioned in the multiplayer part of the 4.0 Alpha blog post? I did! I don't think I deserve it, honestly. Uh, <laughs> I saw that and it made me so happy. I contributed a little bit to the 3.4 um, networking stuff, uh, but it's really cool that Remy decided to mention me. Um, let's search for David Snowpack. Yay, there I am in multiplayer. Compared to the work that Fabio, though, and Max uh, Hillbrunner uh, and these other forks, f folks, uh, Jordan, like all those, all those people did way more work on multiplayer for Godot 4.0 than than I have. But did do a little bit, did a little bit. Um, but yeah, I next stream maybe unless something like comes up, I think we should play around with Godot 4 with the with the first alpha. What networking stuff is coming in 4.0? Oh, so much stuff, so much stuff. Um, the thing that I'm most excited about, and let's see if it's mentioned in here, is um, it's going to be possible to make mesh networks with Enet, and that is so specific. I guess I understand, Ben, that you're that you're just getting into Godot, so like picking something so so niche probably is meaningless. <laughs> but to me, this is really exciting. Um, so in Godot three, the only official like built-in way to make a mesh network, which a mesh network is what you use for doing peer-to-peer, uh, -peer, I actually have a slide. Uh, because I've been working on my next um, uh, presentation for the Rollback Netcode series. Um, and I have a slide showing mesh networks. Is this the one? Yeah. I don't actually know if this slide's going to end up in the real uh, video, because I have a tendency to like just put so much stuff in my videos. Um, and then being like, this video is 30 minutes long. I have to cut it down until it's 10 minutes. But anyway, so Mesh Network is like peer-to-peer, -peer, all the players connecting to each other. The only like officially supported way to do that in Godot 3 is with WebRTC. And WebRTC is great, except when it isn't. <laughs> WebRTC has all of this stuff built into it that sometimes becomes a pain to deal with. So I'm excited that in Godot 4, it will be possible to make Mesh Networks with Enet as well. I think that will be very interesting. Uh, probably the biggest thing that's coming for networking in Godot 4, though, is this replication, scene replication thing that um, primarily Fabio has been working on, but a bunch of other folks as well, um, where you're going to be, be able to basically say, like, I want you to replicate this scene on all these different peers and have to do really very little work, like little work in your game to get multiplayer working. It won't necessarily be the most efficient multiplayer, uh, but it will have this really um, low barrier to entry to go from nothing to having multiplayer in your game. Uh, Godot, I already feel like, has a pretty low barrier to entry to get uh, multiplayer working, but this will take it even lower, which I think is exciting for the community because not everyone is experts in netcode, um, and so this will make it more accessible to more people. I don't know if I personally will ever use it uh, because I'm used to doing you know, netcode at a, at a lower level. Ooh, somebody is stuck down. Oh, nope, Ersi's not stuck. Ersi, you got a pretty cool character. You got... I'm actually having trouble comprehending exactly what you've got. <laughs> Something is covering your face that I don't quite understand. So you have, like, a beard, but then you have, like, a sort of transparent... I don't know. Uh, what else are we talking about over here? Okay, I talked about mesh networks a little bit. Uh, everything in... 4.0, I'm excited to, for the Blender shortcuts for navigation. Yeah, there's 4.0 is gonna be is gonna be so so much fun. Um, I think 
I, I know that everyone is really excited about it. I feel like the road to when we're all going to be able to switch to 4.0 is a little bit longer than some people are assuming. Uh, 4.0 is going to come out, but it's going to be missing some stuff. Uh, that's going to mean that a lot of people are going to end up having to wait for 4.1. But still, it's exciting. It's the future of Godot. Um, it's going to be awesome. I'm, I'm trying to figure out as much as I can how I can start moving my development to 4.0. I frequently get stuck on things like, uh, you know, well, I, could I bring Retro Tank Party there? Well, no, not yet, because we need to have uh, the WebRTC uh, GD extension available. Uh, the Nakama client library needs to be ported to 4.0. Um, I need to, you know, port my physics engines. I don't know. It's like so many things are going to have to wait for either work I have to do or work other people have to do or things that need to be added to core. Uh, WebXR is not going to probably, probably be in 4.0 uh, because uh, the OpenGL support isn't probably going to be fully baked in, in 4.0 either. It's probably going to wait for 4.1. But anyway, it's, it's exciting. It's very exciting. And as much as I can, I'm going to try and find projects that I can do in Godot 4 rather than Godot 3 just to, just to start living in the future. All right. What were we doing before I got distracted and started talking so much about Godot 4? <laughs> we are making an add-on. We're making a Godot add-on. Uh, a very simple one, which, like, I don't know if we finish it, real fast like maybe we can i don't know play games together or talk more about godot 4 i don't know we'll, we'll find something um so uh we're gonna do we're gonna work on this add-on within the toy racer xr project like i mentioned before the goal is to make it so that uh you can configure an export or multiple exports that will just automatically be exported when you save your project uh which would be mostly useful for me in web xr games so what are we going to call this export on save that's a good name. Um, I know there's like an interface you can use in the editor to start making an add-on. I've never used it. Should we try to learn how to use it? Uh, the way that I have always made my add-ons is by copying and pasting stuff from my other add-ons. <laughs> uh, stealing code for myself is, is always a lot of fun. Okay, so create. All right, here we go. Let's try this. We'll try using this form. Export on save. Uh, it is going to be in res add-ons export on save. Say exports your project every time you save. Ooh, Godet. Godet did not write this. David Snowpick wrote this. Version we'll say 0.1. I like to put that on initial versions of my things. And yeah, we'll we'll do exactly this. We'll have it use plugin.gd. Res add-ons export on save. Is anybody else doing the Godot add-on jam? Um, this is such a cool idea, and I'm really looking forward to seeing what comes out of it. Like a bunch of people have already submitted. Uh, yeah, 24 people have already submitted their add-ons. Um, I am I am very excited to look at what other people have made. A Godot editor presence add-on, a uh, to-do list. A lot of people have made to-do lists. I don't entirely understand that. Like this is not the first uh, to-do list add-on for Godot. Dialog Manager, this looks this looks really sweet. I watched uh, Nathan Hode's video about it. Um, quick settings, Godot fun coding. Silly add-on to have some fun while coding. <laughs> that sounds cool. A Pong add-on, so you just play Pong in the editor. That's interesting. Draw on Godot, this seems interesting. Is the idea that you just like draw on the screen. This could be interesting for, for uh, like making tutorials and um, streams and stuff, just being able to draw on the screen. I like the idea of that add-on. I don't know what what uh, stereotypical Jesus is doing over here. Uh, Godot add-on Jesus in control. <laughs> Interesting. Daily Bible messages to encourage you to finish your project and, of course, improve your life. Uh, right. Reso improved resource. Oh, this is going to be sweet. I don't know if you guys have ever made custom resources in Godot. If you then have to like open the resource picker thing and find your resources, that is that is impossible. So this sounds cool. That's a cool add-on. Ben is not doing the add-on jam. Is anybody else though? Like, I, I I think this is such a cool idea. If you're not like, there's a lot of I don't know little annoyances. I'm sure you could come up with something to um to try and and fix in in Godot. Activate now. No because I have not created this file yet. All right, so this dialog will theoretically create our plugin.cfg file for us. 
Let's just go take a look. Ooh, it actually even created the plugin.gd. Ooh, I've been bringed. Thank you very much, anonymous bringer. Um, <laughs> whoa, it's not here though. Or do I have to hit save? Ah, okay, that didn't work. What did I mess up that it created a folder called res? Yeesh. Okay, well, I totally messed this up. Um, let's go into add-ons, or into this, this folder that it made for us. Export on save. What did it make for us in the export on save directory? Nothing. Okay, let's just start over. Let's just start over here. Um, close. Do, you, do you guys have any idea what I did wrong there? I've never tried to use that... Um, that tool before. What does Ricardo say? The script name should have been without res. Oh, perhaps just the base name. Okay. We'll try this one more time. And if it doesn't work, I'll just do this the way I usually start my add-ons. But it's, it's cool that there's like an interface in Godot now to do this. So let's try it again. So export on save. So. Oh, so I shouldn't be putting, okay. We'll just do export on save. Yeah, so I misinterpreted what this like hint was. I thought the hint was saying like, okay, this is an example, but it's saying you just put this and it equals that. Okay, export your project every time you save. Name and snowpack, zero, one, and plugin.gd, and we'll create it. All right, and if I save this and I go look in here, hey, it made it. Okay, cool. Um, you guys probably can't see that because of the bar on the bottom, but I will, I'll bring it up. We have uh, plugin.cfg and plugin.gd. The um, plugin.cfg is basically the information that we entered into that dialog, and the plugin.gd is this script where um, you add all of the stuff that you want your add-on to add uh, to Godot. And um, we need to figure out a couple of things. So the first thing we need to figure out is, is there a way for us to find out when the project is saved? Uh, that's probably the most important thing. Um, then is it possible for us to trigger an export from uh, an editor plugin? And then the third like optional thing, I would really love for the UI that our add-on adds to go in this window. Um, like. It would be cool for, I don't know, something in here, like a, a checkbox where I would say, like, when I'm on the WebXR export, like, click export on save. And then I could go over into the Quest one and say, okay, yeah, this one too, export on save, and, like, click a checkbox there. I don't know if that's possible again. Um, and if it's not, we'll do what we always do and put it into the um, just the settings here. We'll add, like, a new uh, section. Is there, like, an um, an export? section in here? I don't see one. Um, but maybe in the editor section here? I don't know. We'll find a place to stick it. Here she says, I don't know enough to make any add-ons, but I can definitely get excited for dialogue add-ons. Yeah. <laughs> Making uh, uh, dialogue stuff is, is, a, is a pain. Uh, I did like a, a, a game jam with my daughters um, and made a little game about my daughters. And it, it was basically like a walking around and talking to people style top down 16 bit RPG thing. And yeah, programming the dialogue in there. It's a pain. Um, all right. So, thing number one we have to figure out is what did I say before? If we can figure out when the editor saves. And I think the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the docs for editor plugin. And if that doesn't give us any clues, we're actually going to look at the Godot source code. Um, because, as you know, the Godot editor is basically a Godot game. Um, so, like, reading the Godot source code is actually a pretty, gives you, can give you a pretty good idea of what you need to do in GDScript to accomplish the same things. Um, so, yeah, let's see. What do we got? We got some signals, S resource saved, main screen changed, scene changed, scene closed. 
Okay, none of those seem like particularly useful signals. Resource saved, maybe? Like, what is a resource? Is a scene a resource? If so, like, yeah, that sounds great. Um, emitted when the scene is changed in the editor. Okay, yeah. The argument will return the root node of the scene that has just become active. If the scene is empty and new, the argument will be nil. Or not scene change, never mind. I don't know why I was reading this description thinking it was that description. Um, maybe we should just connect to that signal and see what happens. Um, let's try that. We're going to go to our plugin. Uh, we're already on tool script. Okay, cool. Let's say connect um, resource saved. Why is it auto-completing? Resource saved, no. Godot editor, autocomplete, terribly inconsistent. Okay, resource saved, self, say on resource saved, and we will put the companion disconnect over here. Then we will implement that method on resource saved, and I believe it got an argument. Let's jump back to the docs here. It got the actual resource. So resource, resource, and let's let's just print it, um, and maybe with a little message. Resource saved, and we need to enable this. All right, and I don't know if this will come to output. To be honest, let's try it. Save. Resource saved. Environment. The environment was saved. Okay. Uh, let's edit this script. Make some changes here. Save. Okay, this GD script resource was saved. All right. Uh, let's go change a scene. Let's change a scene. I know a scene is technically a resource, right? Um, or not the scene, the packed scene. The packed scene is the resource. The scene itself is, is not. Um, let's add a node. Add a spatial node. All right, and now I'm going to save. It saved the environment? That's interesting. Okay, um, what if I just change like something on this spatial a little bit? 10. Change the translation on the y-axis to 10. I'm going to save. It saved the environment. Am I confused about what environment is? Because I thought that was just like, um, not this environment, but the like default env t res. I thought this was, why is this getting saved all the time? Like every time I hit save, it saves the environment. I'm just gonna, um, I'm gonna add something to our, to our add on here. I'm gonna print out the resource path. Uh, so, ah, the resource, and then it's like resource path. So we'll know exactly what thing it's saving. Okay, yep, it saved this. When I'm over here in the 3D view, and I mess with my spatial here, set the Y to 11, and I hit save. Yeah, it's saving the default end of T-Res. So it doesn't actually tell us when it saves the scene. That's weird. Um, I think it. I think it's still okay though. Like, um, yeah, none of these none of these messages are a problem. I don't think. So long as this signal happens at all, I think we're okay. Um, it does appear that it will happen multiple times if multiple things have gotten saved. Uh, so we're gonna have to do some sort of like debounce thing in our plugin to um, not like export way too many times. Um, we're going to say, uh, make a variable, a flag, like do export, um, do export false. And then when a resource is saved, we're going to say do export equals true. And then we are going to uh, defer to later. We're going to do like call deferred. Um, we'll call our method do export. And then over here in our do export method, where we're actually going to do the exporting, 
uh, we will check this flag. So if not do export, I, it's, I shouldn't have named the, the function and the variable so similarly. What's some better names? Um, here, we just won't put do in that. We'll just say export. That is hopefully less confusing. <laughs> the function name is just export, and the flag is do export. Um, if not export, then we return, and then we clear the flag, and then here we will do some exporting. Okay, um, I guess let's let's just test this. We'll we'll print um, we'll print out to do some exporting. So then we can try changing a couple of different things and make sure that our that our debounce is working. Does that term make sense to other people? I, I do a lot of web development where like debounce is like a, a a thing like you do in in JavaScript where um you know you're, you're you want to do something like when um uh the user is typing in like a, a input field and uh you want it to not happen like 30 times you want them to type and then if they stop for like 100 milliseconds then do the thing that you want to happen Ooh, who's stuck at the bottom let me free you anyway that's called that's called a that's called uh debounce in in web development terms i don't know if that's used in other in other things okay so uh i made a change to this gdscript file i'm gonna make a change to this spatial and i'm going to save and let's look at our output here. So resource saved, it saved the environment. Resource saved, it saved the GDScript file. And then only at the end, only after both of those were done, it did to do some exporting. So I think our debounce is working. OK, so the first part of this we have, I hope, solved. There might be a better way to detect when the editor saves, but this will do for now until we find some problems with it. And then we, we, we can maybe change how it's done. Um, so now we need to figure out how to make the editor do an export. Let's take a look at the editor plugin again. See what sort of things we can add, what sort of things we can set, what sort of things we can get. What is apply changes? This method is called when the editor is about to save the project. Switch to another tab. It asks the plugin to apply any pending state changes to ensure consistency. OK, so I, when I read this first part, about to save the project, I was like, ah, this is the perfect thing. This method is called when the editor is about to run the project. Clear all state and reset the object being edited to 0. We're not actually going to be doing anything with editing. I don't think that applies to us. Yeah, same with edit. Mm -hmm. Get breakpoints. Oh, oh. There's another thing that's coming, I think, in 3.5 or 4 or something sometime soon uh, with like a list uh, of all of the breakpoints in the project, which is something I've wanted from Godot for like ever. So I guess someone could make that in an add on. Uh, da, da, da. Get plugin icon, plugin name, get state. Oh, okay. That's interesting. So you can return the state of your editor plugin so that when the project is loaded, it can restore the state. That is that is pretty cool. As main screen, make visible, save external data. This method is called after the editor saves the project or when it is closed. It asks the plugin to save edited uh, external resources. Hmm. I don't know. That also doesn't sound like a great place for us to be because uh, when our plugin gets asked to save external data, um, the rest of the external data may, maybe didn't all get saved yet. So I don't know if we want to use that. Anyway, we're, we, we already have a good enough solution for that problem, for the editor is saved problem. Let's see if we can figure out how to trigger an export. So add export plugins. So this would be if we wanted to add our own export thing. Registers a new editor export plugin. Export plugins are used to perform tasks when the project is being exported. Hmm. Yeah, let me take a peek at this, just, just for curiosity. Editor export plugins are automatically activated whenever the user, user exports the project. Their most common use is to determine what files are being included in the exported project. 
for each plugin, export begin is called at the beginning of the export process, and then export file is called for each exported file. So not useful for us, interesting for the future. It's seen import plugin, spatial gizmo, tool menu, tool submenu, uh, editor interface. So the, the optional thing I was talking about, like trying to add something to um, this export window interface wise, we might get by going through the editor interface object here, because this gives you access to a bunch of stuff. Uh, maybe off of base control, maybe you'd like sort of go down the, the scene tree looking at the base control. I'm not sure. Let me stick let me stick on the problem I'm trying to solve. How do we trigger an export? How do we programmatically trigger an export? Undo redo, Q save layout, remove some stuff. Set for set input, update overlays. Okay, nothing in here has given me given me any ideas. So we're gonna go to the source. We're going to the Godot source code. Close all this stuff. So what I want to see, uh, and we're in the SG Physics 2D workspace, that's probably fine. I don't think it matters. The Godot source code is here, so that's all, all that matters. Uh, what I want to see is how the export window triggers this. Let's look for some, some things with export in the name. Options, export template manager. Hmm. Hmm. So one trick I have for finding code uh, that I don't know like where it is is to look for strings. Um, yeah, so like these strings, like export pck slash zip. Uh, probably that's not a string that's used in a lot of places. So let's go uh, to the Godot 3 source code. Let's make the font huge so you guys can see it. And I'm just going to grep for um, that button. We'll find it in the source code somewhere. PCK slash zip. Which may take a moment. Anybody playing anything interesting right now? I have like not played any any games. Or that's not entirely true. That's not entirely true. I was gonna say I haven't played anything in the last week, but I've been playing um a little bit of uh uh, crash lands on on my phone, and uh, the reason I didn't think of it immediately is like I don't I, I don't always think of mobile games as games, <laughs> which I mean I shouldn't uh, think that way obviously, but like when I'm not you know putting on a VR headset or sitting at my TV with a controller, like it doesn't always feel like gaming, but it still is gaming. All right, so we found we found where this this code is. It is in this uh, project export CPP. So that is where we need to look for the UI. And then we're going to follow the code in the UI to where it's actually doing the thing. So project export CPP. And maybe even I'll start in the H file just to orient myself a little bit to what's going on here. It is a, a confirmation dialog. That's interesting. I wouldn't have expected that that was implemented as a child of confirmation dialogue. Yeah, all the things you would kind of expect. Do we see one of these that looks like the button callback? Somewhere this thing must be saying, you know, the on pressed single sh signal should trigger a callback. Possibly, possibly one of these. Let's jump to the code for that. No, just take me all the way there. Just take me. Okay, export project. Get current preset. Get platform. <laughs> File. Ensure the signal is connected if previous attempt left disconnected. Wow, this code is more convoluted than I would have thought. Is this what I think it is, though? Is this actually the callback? Hmm. 
Well, let's uh, let's see where we're connecting to the button signal. So we'll search for the word connect, and we will look at all of those and see if we can find the button pressed. Index pressed. Oh, okay, that's a menu button. All right. So here's some pressed. Delete preset, duplicate preset. Maybe I should search for the button text again. So the button I usually press is export project. So let's search for export project. So here's where we're adding the button, connecting it to exactly the, the function we were looking at, exactly that method. OK, so we, we were in the right place. The code just wasn't making any sense to me when I was looking at it. Let's, let's look at it a little, a little harder here. So we get the current preset. We get the current platform. Export project. What is export project? Project export dialog. File editor file dialog. Okay, so this is this this right here is the uh, editor file dialog that comes up when you hit this button. So that's where you're picking the location. And wow, I just thought of another way to do this though. Um, you can you can do exports from the command line. Um, like if you go to the command line and here, I'll show you guys. If you do Godot export WebXR and then give the path, um, that should have exported it. It did. Um, so if we can't figure out like an internal API that lets us do the export, which is what I'm trying to figure out here, if there's just like a function we can call to do the export. But if we can't figure that out, maybe uh, we could just launch Godot again um, with the right arguments. Uh, that is a possibility. But let's, let's, let's keep digging to see if there's an API. So um, it is configuring the export project dialog, adding some filters. Um, Seeing if we have an export path configured. If so, it puts it as the default path there. Uh, da, 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 sets the current file based on the default file name. So we make sure that text entered is connected to a signal on export project. OK, is it disabled? OK, so it looks like what this is doing is it making it so you can't press OK until some text is entered, possibly. Not 100% sure about that. Um, so then the export project dialog is popped up in the center. And OK, I guess it just hands everything off to the export project dialog. So there's got to be a signal that this fires to get us back here. Um, to do the actual work. So let's look for how expert project is set up. Um, get OK, set disabled. This file entered thing is, maybe I should follow that. Um, maybe I should see where that leads, but I'm going to do one last attempt at looking for places where signals are connected to this file dialog. File selected? OK. OK, this looks like the next place we end up. So when this, this editor file dialog is file selected signal is fired, we end up going to this method, export project to path. Um, what happens here? Ooh, this looks this looks nice. Platform, export project, and some stuff. This looks like an API exporting the project. That seems good. Are we keeping any notes? <laughs> I need to get an official note taker for the stream. I'll take the notes. It's OK. I don't really need a note keeper, but it'd be cool. 
All right, so platform is what? Platform is an editor export platform. We're going to just write down the names of these classes. Editor export platform and editor export preset. So, oh, and actually it's getting the platform from the preset, which is interesting. And then the platform does export project with the preset. Maybe I'll take all of these lines into my notes, actually. Um, and maybe just get rid of the error things here so I can look at that and have an idea of what's happening. Okay, so... How are we going to get ourselves some of these? Um, how are we going to get like a list of what the presets are or like grab a preset or something? Let's look at get current preset. This gets the editor export singleton and does get export preset. Okay, this looks like where we got to start. Hopefully this will be the last bit of digging in the Godot source we have to do. And then the rest will be in GDScript, but we will find out. So okay, the question is from GDScript, can we get access to the editor export singleton? And then from this singleton, we can uh, load a preset and then do this stuff to actually export it. So let's head over to the Godot docs. That is where I would like to start searching. Uh, we'll close this out. chat is very quiet today. Either I'm boring the crap out of everyone, or this uh, uh, topic is not very interesting, making an editor plugin. Or maybe I just didn't pick an exciting enough editor plugin. I don't know. It always makes me nervous when nobody's saying anything. <laughs> uh, okay, we're gonna look for editor export to see if this class is a thing that we can get to know. Am I in the right docs? Looks like it. 3.4 branch. Editor export. Let me look at editor export in the Godot source code and see uh, if it's bound. It is bound in some kind of way. Yeah, bind methods. We should be able to get it, right? Only one method is bound, save. Hmm. Ben Stanley says, I'm just working. Ricardo says, no, it's good. Ersi says, also having it in the background working on something. Okay, cool. Thanks, guys. <laughs> now, that helps my self-esteem, like, for real. Uh, <laughs> so I don't think I'm just talking to, my, talking to the corner of my office here. Okay. So how the heck are we going to get what we need here? We need to get export preset. First, is export preset bound to GDScript? Um, so it, it, it is registered. Let's find the bind methods and see what we can get to from GDScript. Ooh, ooh, okay. Or wait, no, editor export plugin? That's the thing we were already looking at before. Wait, wait, wait. I got lost here. I've got lost in, in the code. Okay, so. Editor export get singleton get export presets. Okay, editor export, and we need to get a preset. And it took me to not the right place. Editor export preset, take me to editor export preset. Editor export preset. Okay, here we go. Editor export preset. It is bound. But what is in its bind methods? I don't even see its bind methods. Yeah, so this is how this is how I got lost last time. I searched for bind methods and I found it on a different class. Um, editor export. 
I'm not sure anything is bound. Editor export preset. Hmm. Got lots of getters and setters. The buddy Adrian, hey! The process of making a plugin is actually really interesting. Well, thanks for coming and thanks for saying so, uh, Adrian. I'd also be really curious if you had a chance to check out the um, the latest uh, SG Physics 2D build with the is on floor and all those friends, because um, I'm just I, I'm so excited to see if that works, <laughs> if that if that implementation will work for you. Uh, so I can get that release out. I'm excited to uh, to get that one out. Ricardo says, I wonder if you'll end up having to do some get child magic on the editor control to finally access that functionality. Maybe. Um, maybe. The problem is if the method we need to call isn't bound, like there's nothing we can do, even if we can get the node. Like we might have the node in our hands, but if we can't call the method. So actually, yeah, let's start with that. Let's start at the bottom. Let's start at the bottom. Let's see if the this platform, editor export platform, we need to call export project on it. If that method is not bound, there is no hope for us. Um, so let's head there. Editor export platform. Editor export platform. Oh come on. VS Code searching isn't isn't always that good. It might it might actually be in here. So editor export. Oh, right here. Take me there. Take me there, VS Code. Okay, so editor export platform is like registered in the class DB. It is bound to GDScript. Now what methods can we call on you from GDScript? Where is your bind methods? I'm just not seeing it. Okay, let's go to the CPP file. That'll make it a little bit easier to search here. Um, we are, where are we? Okay. Take me to anywhere. Is there a CPP file for this? Editor export.h. Editor export.cpp. Okay, there is. And we're going to look for um, what was the class? Editor export platform. Bind methods. Oh my god. Yeah. Um, it appears as though it does not actually bind the method that we want to call. Um, let me see the method we're calling and make sure that it doesn't like call something else that we are able to call. So we want to call this export project from our notes. Which is not defined here. Is it defined in the H file? Oh, we're going around in 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 circles here. Export project. Okay, is this the right method on the right class? Editor export platform. Export project. Go to your implementation, which is where. Oh, it's done on like child classes. So editor export platform PC has its own definition. Okay. Let's go see what let's go see what this does. Hmm. Okay, this looks very much like it's doing the manual work. So this is the function. This is the function that does it, and I don't think it's accessible from GDScript. Uh, so I think we're going to have to do the thing that I said before um, and like start, start like rerun Godot from the command line. I think that's what we're going to have to do, which isn't the worst, right? Like a weird window will pop up for a second and then go away, but that's not the worst ever. Um, it's better than nothing, right? Buddy Adrian says, I did check it out just an hour ago. It works great. Sweet. It feels just like a Doe's default physics engine. That is awesome, man. Thanks so much for checking that out. Whew. I'll do, I'll release, I'll make a new alpha release uh, this afternoon. I, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to get that out. There have been so many fixes in the last week. I'm just, yeah, got to get them out. Got to get them out. All right. So there is, um, some stuff somewhere about re-executing Godot. Uh, because it's done all over the place. Uh, every time you hit 
play up here, it's executing the exact same executable again, but with some different arguments. And so I think there is some method somewhere that we can call on to do that. Um, and the question is, is that method accessible in GDScript or not? <laughs> First, let's find it. Um, and how are we going to find it? What is the way to search for that? Um, play the project. We can chase down the UI for this play button and see where that takes us. Somewhere to start. Having done uh, open source for so long, like I have all these stupid tricks for like trying to find the part of the code that I need to see quickly. And like this is one of my favorite ones, looking for, for text in the UI that I can grep for. <laughs> so we're going to grep for play the project. Is that right with all the case and everything? Play the project. Ooh, Ricardo's writing something. Usually when Ricardo writes something, it's brilliant and solves all my problems. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> Let's see what this grep gives us. What's going to be faster, the grep or Ricardo? Ooh, okay, so that got a lot of translations. I don't care about that. I care about where the TTR or TRR or whatever. Here it is. Editor, editor node, play button, set tooltip. Here we go. Would it be possible to do a hacky solution where you press quick export HTML5 button in the editor control? Yeah. Would that be possible? I think so, to be honest. I think so. Um, so are you thinking of what is what is the quick export button so i know like we could walk the scene tree and eventually find our way to this button in this dialogue um what is the quick export button is that like this guy up here the um the little html5 guy although that does some other stuff that's actually like executing it but yeah we should be able to press any button we want to press uh because we can always press buttons that's just generating an event um, and put, you know, just feeding it into the Godot's input system. So if we can find a button, we can press it. I'm just not entirely sure which, which button you mean. <laughs> yeah, that is, that is a good idea. Um, yeah, we'd have to like programmatically select which preset we want and press this if we're doing this, uh, if we're gonna try and like uh, mechanize this, um, dialogue. So I'm going to keep I'm going to keep looking at the code while while Ricardo keeps running, but that's a very interesting idea. Um that is definitely worth pursuing because it would not start a new process, which would be nice. Let's go to editor node. I meant the guy in the corner. Oh, it plays it too. Yeah. So we wouldn't want to we wouldn't want to play it. Um but I think we could I think we could press the button in the export dialog here without showing the dialog even, assuming that um, it isn't created every time you press it. I'm assuming that this dialog already exists and it is just shown when you click that. But if it's actually creating it every time you click that, then okay, yeah, we'll have to actually create it and then walk down the scene tree to uh, you know press one of these and hit uh, export project which kind of sucks too right because it'll it'll open up this next dialog which will then also have to mechanize i'm starting to like this idea less and less now that i'm thinking about all of the all of the scene tree walking and messing with we'd have to do especially too because um like the the way the scene tree exists in the godot editor is not like an api right it could change at any time uh due to you know just the godot core team adding some feature um, so that could also lead to a situation where we have to continuously change our add-on to like keep up with 
changes to the scene tree, or or maybe not. Like I don't know how often this part of the scene tree would even change anyway. Let's let's if we get it working at all, <laughs> we can always like explore other approaches to make it work better. Uh, but let's let's see if we can get it working in one possible way. So the editor node, which is a good node, because I'm I'm. 99.9% .9 sure we have access to this node um, from GDScript or not. It didn't come up in the docs, but I, I, I really feel like we do. Let's look at the, the CPP. Um, editor node, does it have a bind methods? It does. Let's go look at that. Uh, edit a node bind methods. It binds a lot of private methods. Get GUI base. Play pressed <laughs> signals. We get some nice signals about when play was pressed. Oh, is this like the source of our resource saved? Oh, it has a scene saved signal. Oh, whatever. Our resource saved is working well enough for us. Um, but this is where. We had the play something. What, what did I grep up? I grepped up um, play button. Let's look for play button. We want to see what signals get connected to play button. Play button, set press, blah, blah, blah. Play button. Connect, pressed. Uh, it goes to menu option. It's an interesting method name for this. What a menu option. I guess menu options used for a bunch of these things. Okay. Uh, I'll make my, my search here a little more specific menu option. Menu option confirm. And there's some in num in this giant switch statement for play. I will just grab for capital play. Run play. Okay, I'll take us to this method. Run play. Oh, which takes us to another thing, which takes us to run false. Okay, this might be where it's actually happening. Run file name. Scene get file name. It builds it. If it can't build it, it returns. Oh, here we go. We're getting to some editor run dot run all right what is editor run okay i guess there's a thing called uh, a class called editor run with a method called run edit uh, editor run where is it editor run take me to your leader editor run is not uh in the class to be or bound in any way. So we're going to have to hope that the contents of this method um, are helpful. OK, so it is building some command line arguments. Oh, and I need this for later. So you guys remember um, in the, uh, the, the Godot rollback netcode add-on, we were working on the log inspector. And one of my goals was to allow uh, when you're when you're replaying a match through the log inspector to allow the replayed match to connect to the debugger, that is this code. <laughs> I need this, so I'm gonna save this for later. Uh, or it's not only this code; probably more stuff is happening. Hang on, args pushback, remote host colon this. But what what is it actually? What's the argument? Okay, remote debug. All this remote debug, and then it puts the the host and port on there. I'm gonna copy and paste this for when I come back to working on that project. Let me 
drop that somewhere. I guess I'll do it over here. I think I have my my Google Drive open over here. Sorry, you guys don't get to see my Google Drive. It's private, sort of. I'm pretty sure I've I've shown it accidentally a hundred times on stream. Um, so what's a good place to put these notes? I'll just make a new document for now. I'll find it. I'll find the right place for them later. I'll call this um, Godot arguments to um, set up remote debugging. That actually reminds me, am I like doing this already in that add-on? Uh, did I already figure out how to do this and and did it? Let's go look. <laughs> <laughs> I might be searching for something I already have implemented. Um, start a new Godot editor and go look at, at that project. Roll back. Um, roll back my code demo. So, ooh, this is probably on the wrong branch though. Let me switch to the branch where I'm working on the, the replay for the log inspector. Uh -huh. Oh, I might be working on it in a branch on Retro Tank Party. Which kind of makes sense because I don't have anything to test uh, in the in the demo project. Yeah, so get checkout, rollback, replay, rebased. Which uh, means I can't use this editor because we need our custom compiled Godot to run... Um, Retro tank party. No, why can't I just 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 give me the full path here, guys? I've been I'm just going through my command line history to run this, and it, it appears I haven't done this in so long. It's no longer saved in my command line history. Okay. X11 tools, right? Because we're not using any optimizations. And that's why it's loading so slowly. Turns out optimizations make things go faster. Okay. Um, Netcode. So this would be hmm, in the replay server, perhaps? No, the replay server is what's running inside of the add-on. And then we just launch... Uh, so let's start. Let's start with the UI and work our way down. So I remember what button we press. Uh, show me. It's this launch button. We want to press this launch button, which takes us to here, which I guess is in the replay server. Surprisingly, launch game. Ah, <laughs> it's on OS. OS execute get executable path. Wow. I was looking for a really long time, and it turns out the answer is really simple. What's this false for? Come on. Docs, load me some docs. Ah, whatever. Uh, we will we will look in the uh, da, 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 in these docs. Okay, OS. Execute. So it takes a path, it takes arguments, blocking, okay. Cool. That's what that false is. We don't want to be. We don't want to run this process blocking. Um. Cool. So that's exactly how to run the the Godot editor to run the current executable. We might actually want to do it blocking because uh, we don't want to end up in a situation where, for some reason, it launches like a whole bunch of them. We only ever want to launch one at a time. And um, what I remember from doing this is that there is no OS method to check if a particular PID, process ID, is currently running. You can just kill it. You have the PID and you can kill it. And uh, you have no way of checking if it's still running. So I think we do actually want it to be blocking in our case. But let's, let's jump back to the actual thing we're actually working on on this actual stream. And that's over here. 
So we will execute this blocking true, which will certainly slow things down. The user after they save will notice like a little like delay as it exports, uh, but that's fine. Uh, you can always enable or disable the add-on. Um, and we need to supply some arguments, uh, which I guess we kind of already know. It's going to be uh, export, and then the name of the preset, which in this case is WebXR. We'll come up with some way to configure that later. Preset name. And I don't know if we don't set a path, it will just take the default path. That would be amazing, uh, but I don't actually know. And we want to know if it's successful. So let's go look in OS, execute, see what we get. Because we are blocking, I think this int might be the uh, error code, the exit status. Yep, OK, exit code. Perfect. The output might also be interesting to have. Because um, if we get an error, we'll need to show the user something about what the error was. Uh, I'm in the wrong editor. I'm just going to close this one. Don't save. So I don't keep accidentally going to the wrong one. Okay. Uh, so args will make an output array like the docs showed us how to do. We'll put it here. And we need to get an exit code. I'm going to say if exit code does not equal zero, then an error has occurred. Um, and for now, Let's just do an alert that says error exporting. We'll throw in the preset name. Preset name. And then let's just print out the output array. I don't know. That seems fine for now. Um, and otherwise, we want to print out something successful. Successfully exported preset name. Whoa, whoa, yeah. <laughs> Did you guys see that? I just went to save the code that I was writing, but because I'm writing it in the editor that we are using it, it actually just exported the project. <laughs> Oh, that's hilarious. Oh my God. And I think there is this thing where every time you open a project in Godot that it writes project.godot, which kind of sucks. Um, I wonder if there's a way to disable that uh, because that will make this super annoying. If every time you save, it also shows you the, do you want to reload uh, godot.project? But um, it looks like this works. Uh, we need to make it configurable for the user. We need to solve the problem I was just talking about with the um, project.godot getting saved. I actually have a suspicion that that issue where the project.godot is always saved um, may have been recently fixed in some... Um, branch somewhere. Let, let's go search for that really quick. Uh, no, we're not going to search on the GitHub page because the search there is crap. We're going to search GitHub Godot um, save project.godot on, or is it, what is the name of it? Is it godot.project or project.godot? I might be saying this backwards. Project.godot. Okay, I had it right. Um, save project.godot on load. Okay, maybe we are going to search for it on um, GitHub. Another way to search for it is in my email. Uh, I have a lot of notifications turned on for the Godot project. I, 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 I try to keep up with them. I'm about 500 emails behind as of today, but I'm usually only about 20 or so emails behind. Uh, I just had a busy week and I haven't, I haven't had a chance to catch up. Um, 
So we don't want to look at open issues because I believe this was closed. I'm going to say save project.do, see if that gets us anything. Project settings, project setting changes aren't always, okay, no, that's not it. It's not saved after a pong and it's automatically disabled. I swear I saw something about this. Um, about someone fixing this issue. Project I could do. Always saved load. Hmm. Okay, Godot edits and saves files even when not saving anything in the editor. That sounds... Oh, this is old. This might not be the thing. Okay. Uh, Godot saves over everything it opens. This is not true, unless you have a concrete example. The only instance of such behavior is project.godot, but this is intended. See this issue. Okay, I will, I will see this issue. Save project after opening. So it looks like someone added this behavior that we don't want to happen on purpose. Following files are new on disk. Dialog opens every time project runs. Let's see if this, when this change was added, <laughs> if they gave us a way to not do it. But look at this code. This is horrible. Save the project after opening it to mark it as last modified. <sighs> Why? Why have you done this to us? So when does this happen? Which which notification triggers this? Not that it really matters. That code looks pretty inescapable. Switch case blah 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 blah. But what case is this? I can't even tell. What lines up with this column? This code is very confusingly formatted. I am really having trouble telling which which notification is triggering this, but it doesn't matter. Like it's uh, there's just no way around this, unless like we do something really really hacky. Like if we look up what the modification date was, then run the export, and then set the modification date back to what it used to be but i don't know if godot gives us like the cross-platform tools to do that they fixed an issue with that saving but at what cost <laughs> yeah i mean the, the 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 thing i would really like is an api that i can call to trigger exporting um but i don't want to have to hack godot core to create this add-on <laughs> uh, but i have a feeling i have a feeling we might be getting to that point so this was added and it was commented on over here on october in october but i have this like feeling that That, that this was that someone went back on this at some point let's take a look maybe a duplicate of this fixed by this Fixed by, do we already have that one open? Looks like no.
Exporting from the command line still opens the editor. So it's triggering saves. This is literally this is literally our problem here. Uh, sounds like something that could be caused by the one we just looked at. Exporting from command line still opens the editor, so it triggers saving. You can use headless binary or pass the no window argument. Does that work? The headless editor will still attempt to write to project.cado when it's open. There's no way to disable this. See this, but that's not. So the solution would be to disable saving on startup when the editor is headless or add a new flag, like no save. I want this new flag. I don't think this needs a new flag, says Kalanow. Um, but the editor in general should not attempt to save project when nothing has changed. We have many issues related to file locking. It's already the case, blah, blah, blah. Don't save project on startup in no window mode. So when I apply this issue, I remove this. Is my opinion. Okay. Uh, which one was this? Don't save. Don't save project settings. Open in no window mode. Um, so let's look at these changes. I do not understand these changes. This this code doesn't make sense to me. Um, has setting global script classes old equals blah 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 if old is empty blah blah, blah. So, okay so maybe this is returning before we get to there maybe I don't know this code doesn't make any sense um where did we get here how did we get here okay let's just try um running with no window mode and see what that does. Also, what we should do is go look at this code in the current version of Godot because this is all old stuff. All of these issues are old. Um, so what was the argument for no window? I think uh, it was just no window, no window. All right, let's try that. Let's first of all, we'll just try it and then um, if it doesn't work, we'll go look at the current code. So, no window, which actually we want anyway. We want that to happen anyway. Oh, and I saved it. Did it do it? Uh, I, That might've just worked. That might've just worked. I, it's like so hard to tell. <laughs> okay, let's clear the output. And I'm going to save again. And saving scene sticks here for a while. Resource save successfully export website. We we did it. We did it, guys. <laughs> hey, Voitech, welcome to the stream. How's it going? Different tab for no window mode. Oh, Ricardo's just telling me where to find the thing I was looking for before. Okay, so. Guys, I think we're I think we have all of the pieces in place to do this. We just have to um fix it up a little bit. We just have to tidy it up a little and uh we can get this submitted to the to the Godot add-on jam. This is kind of the, the like this little latch up here. We need a way to set which presets we want to export. Um And this message I think is fine. Maybe call it out a little more, put some stars in front of it. Um, the air, every time I save, now it's going to export, <laughs> which is what we want, but it's just funny. Um, this all seems good. Yeah, we just need a way to set the preset. And the question is, um, do we want to allow multiple presets? And where do we want to set that? I think my original thought that we could bury it in this UI uh, I think let's not even try to do that. That sounds really hard. Um, you know, we, we looked at where this code comes from and we'd have to dig so deep in the scene tree to put something in there. VNTXX, why not try to keep the export running in the background and provide some sort of exporting indicator in the UI? That's an interesting idea. That's an interesting idea. There are some problems with that based on the uh, APIs that Kado gives us. So we are using OS execute, um, which can run it in the background, 
and then it returns to us the PID of the um, of the uh, process running, but then it doesn't let us do a lot of things that we would want to do with that PID. Uh, like I, I, when I was working on a different add-on, my uh, Godot rollback netcode add-on, um, I wanted to be able to run something in the background, which we are doing. It's running it in the background, and then check if it's still running. Like, be able to say, like, is this PID still alive? And I could not find a way in the Godot APIs to do that. And so, like, we would have to come up with something very clever <laughs> to tell us when that export actually finishes. Because in particular, we don't want multiple of them to run at once. Um, so that seems that seems quite tricky to do in a cross-platform way. Uh, like I would know how to check if that PID is still running um, for Linux, but we'd also have to write that code for Mac OS and Windows. Um, I can think of other ways to solve that problem, but they all involve like a big increase in complexity. Like we could have a separate process that is sort of like an export server that uh, just waits for us to send like a, hey, go do the export message. And then it does it in the background and gives us a way to like check on the export. Um, but I don't want to add that kind of complexity. I want to finish this. I want to make this little tiny plugin go. Ooh, uh, you'll probably need to pull it. Yeah, but we don't have a we don't have a, a an API to do the polling. Voitek says, "I've been watching your video about deterministic lockstep. I've got a question. Is it possible determinism with Godot built-in physics? No, it's not possible to do determinism with uh, Godot built-in physics. However, I wrote a deterministic physics engine um, for 2D." Uh, if you are making a 3D game, I uh, sorry, I, I I don't know if anyone has made a deterministic uh, 3D physics engine, but here I will I'll put the link in the chat. Oh, and it it seems I also <laughs> killed the overlay. I'll I'll um let me put this in the chat and then I'll bring the overlay back. And you guys got some pretty cool characters going. So yeah, there's the link to to uh, my deterministic physics engine. <laughs> Voitek, you have a sweet looking character. You got some kind of staff. That's awesome. Adrian, I didn't see yours yet. You you look like just like you just look like a programmer. Like you're just like a programmer who's like, you know, working. I could see you sitting at a coffee shop with that huge beard and a bald head. Uh who else is who else has come in since I looked in here? VNTXX has a very, you know, plain looking character. Also could just be could just be a programmer. Actually, your character's a lot like Adrian's. You guys got the same beard, the same bald head, different skin tone, same pants. I think you guys might work at the same place. I think you guys, both your characters work at the same uh, uh, game dev studio. <laughs> but yeah, um, I there's I have a tutorial. I should probably send you the tutorial too, Voitech. Um, I made a tutorial on how to get started using uh, my deterministic physics engine. And um, I haven't made a video one. I just have a text one. I'm probably going to try to squeeze in a video one sometime during the rollback netcode series. But uh, here is the the uh, link to the text to the text tutorial. So I'm curious, Voitech, what kind of game are you making? What what kind of game do you want to make with um with uh, uh, the the rollback netcode? Oh, you've already seen the physics engine? Okay, well. <laughs> <laughs> well, cool. Uh, yeah, what what uh, what kind of game are you trying to make, and like, why uh, do you in particular want to use the Godot physics engine? I mean, there probably is there probably is a highly restricted way that you could maybe use the physics engine and have it sort of maybe work, but I I don't know. That sounds really hard. Like, you'd have to do everything in whole numbers. No, I don't think you can do it. I don't think you can do it with the Godot built-in physics engine. Because there's just so much math going on. Like, even just, like, move and collide is going to get you into fractional numbers that are going to create determinism problems. Anyway, I'm super curious about what you're working on. So let me know. Uh, where were we here? Uh, we were talking about how Godot doesn't give us any cool uh, APIs to do things with PIDs. So if you like grep through these docs and just look for PID, it gives us exactly one thing we can do with a PID, kill. 
um, we would have to like write our own platform specific code to check if that PID is still running. Wojtek is making a project for a bachelor's degree with syncing non-deterministic physics. With syncing non-deterministic physics. So, okay, syncing non-deterministic physics is definitely a thing that like lots of games do, uh, but I wouldn't do it with rollback and prediction. Um, that sounds more like what you're... Okay, so if you have a game that is, uh, you know, like hub and spoke, and the, the hub is an authoritative server that is in charge of the authoritative game state, you would say, okay, the physics running on the server are the real physics. There's, you know, each of the clients is also running their own physics simulation, which is non-deterministic, and you would be doing corrections. You'd be doing corrections on those clients to um, to to adjust them to what the server has periodically. Um, that just will that approach is fine, <laughs> and it works in lots of games. I, it will not work for rollback and prediction with like the lockstep kind of stuff that uh, uh, my my add-on does. Um, you could maybe make something that's kind of like a hybrid between like a, a an authoritative client server thing and rollback. Um, you would still have to pick one of the the clients to have the authoritative picture of the match. You would have to sync more than input, which like if it's pure rollback and prediction, you're syncing only input. You'd have to sync some amount of state. Um, but yeah, that's interesting. That's an interesting project you have going. <laughs> Aknakos spawning avatar, yay! What does Aknakos have? Where are you, Aknakos? Oh, yours is sweet. You got like a crown and a shield? Dude, you you might have won the avatars today. Although, I don't know, Voitex is pretty cool too. He's got that staff. I don't know. Okay, so what is, what is VNTXX? I thought there was an API in OS that allows checking whether a process is still alive via PID, but it seems like the only thing comes close to consuming a PID is the kill function. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so like... Again, like I would love if Godot would add some methods to the OS uh, singleton that would let us do more things with PIDs. That would be great. That sounds like a six-month project because, <laughs> like, I could write the code for Linux. Uh, I could probably Google how to write the code for Mac OS. I would have no idea how to do that for Windows. Like, I I have not done Win32 API code since the '90s. <laughs> I have no idea how you do that in Android, how you do that on, on iOS. Um, so yeah, that would be that would be an ordeal to add um, a checking if the process is still running method. But I would love to have it. It would be a great thing to have in, in Godot. All right. So I, how are we doing on time? All right. We got a half an hour to kind of like tighten up the loose ends and, and maybe submit this to the game jam. Yeah, I, I agree VNTXX it would be a great addition. Um, Okay, so uh, we're going to do what I usually do in my add-on, so I'm going to steal some more code for myself. There's like a little uh, method for dealing with project settings that we're going to steal from the rollback netcode add-on. Um, it is in plugin.gd, right? Wait, did I not call it plugin.gd this time? I'm having trouble. Oh, I called it plugin with a capital P. Ooh. Um, add project setting. This is the method. And we might not even need all of it because we're only doing a single project setting. So we'll put it close to the top, I think. So this is a nice method that basically like does all of the junk you need to do to add a new project setting. Oh, and it has this property order thing, which we don't need because we're not doing multiple ones. Um, let's get rid of that. Get my thing going. Start a Godot PR jam. Yeah, <laughs> that would be an interesting jam, Ricardo. Aknakos, my add-on submission is very simple. I wanted to do an ML plugin, but then I remembered how lazy I was to find a good font in the web, so I pivoted and made a Google Fonts Explorer and downloader. I'm not entirely sure what you mean by ML plugin. What does ML stand for in, in, that, um, in that situation? Pretty different, but I shall make an ML plugin eventually. Yeah, so did you already submit yours? 
I, I was poking around looking at um, the, the submissions earlier. Do I still have it open? Yeah, I do. Oh, machine learning. Okay, that ML. <laughs> yeah, that would be that would be pretty sweet. Is yours already in here? I'm looking for names that that Oh, here we go, Aknakos! There you are! Google Fonts Explorer for Godot. Sweet. I'll check it out later. I'm gonna check out all of these, man. These look cool. I'll even I'll even check out the Jesus one. Like I I'm gonna check them all out. These are sweet. Godot Discord game SDK. So another another two Discord ones in the same jam. That's interesting. Hitboxes. Okay, I'm getting distracted. I'm getting distracted. Let's let's uh let's let's finish this up. So we're not gonna deal with property order. That doesn't matter to us right now. Uh, Aknako says they look very cool indeed. Okay, so add product setting. We check if it's there. If not, we set it. We set the initial value. Some hint stuff about the name and the type. That all sounds good. The question is, can we grab a list of presets? Because it kind of sucks if we're going to have to say, type out your preset into this field. Can we get a list of presets? Um, I feel like there's not going to be an API for us to get a list of presets. So to, to, because I've gone so off track, I'm going to remind you guys of what I'm trying to do here. Um, I want to have a way for the user to set which preset we are uh, exporting on save. Um, and uh, it would be sweet to have like a drop down, but I don't know if we can get a list of the options from the API. We spent a ton of time digging through the Godot source code, and I don't think any of that is exposed. We could directly read and parse the... Um, what is it? Export.cfg? Export presets.cfg? Uh, let's look. Export presets CFG. Is it easy to pull these out? Let's look for name equals. If name equals on a whole line, let's regex this right here. If name equals is always the name of a preset, and it appears to be. Cool. Problem solved. OK, we need to write a little method. <laughs> we need to write a little method that's going to read the list of presets. Um, so we'll say func uh, get, pre, get export presets. And we are going to return an array of strings. And to do that, we are going to make a file, and we are going to first check if the file exists. Here, I'm just adding a return value so it doesn't yell at me anymore. If file dot, file dot, come on, autocomplete, autocomplete. It knows autocomplete is frequently very frustrating. Ah, what did I press? Okay, no. I'm going to comment you out for a second. I'm going to uncomment you. And now, autocomplete for me. Oh my god. Okay, we're going to look at we're going to look at the docs cuz the autocomplete is is driving me mental here. Uh, file exists. That is what the method is called. If not file, uh, if not file dot file exists, which it is strangely not auto completing for me, um, is export presets dot cfg, then return ret. Why is it not auto completing this? Am I like typing it wrong? Like what? What is happening here? I'm going to obsess over file exists, like this is on the file class. Hmm. OK, well, then we're going to open this file. Uh, I always forget the magic incantation for that because it is a little weird. The API is kind of strange. So we say open, then we say content, get as text. Maybe there's a get as something else that will help us. Hmm. 
buffer, get CSV line. What I want is, is lines. Okay, so I guess, yeah, we can go through line by line. Turns the next line of files a string. It's probably an EOF method. I'm remembering this right. EOF reached. Okay. So let's start at the top. We need to open the file. To make this a little bit cleaner, I'll make a, a little constant up here. I'll say const um, export presets path. So we can get rid of this. Export presets path. Put this in here. Use our constant again. File open export presets path. Uh, do we get any? info about whether it's a success or not. Always remember to handle your error cases. So many problems in life come from not handling your error cases. Okay, we do get this, so we'll say if uh, does not equal okay, then return ret, and we should probably say something. Unable to open export Presets, maybe that would be better as like a, a, a push in, in an error, maybe, push error. Yeah, that probably makes more sense. And then we need to do while not file, was it EOF reached? Reached EOF? Oh, autocomplete. <laughs> Does anyone use uh, VS Code with Godot? Uh, I've always wondered how the autocomplete is using uh, VS Code with um, Godot, because there's like an autocomplete thing. Oh, oh, Aknakos. Aknakos says there's also a config file which helps with config files. I should try using it in my next plugin game. Hmm. VNTX, oh wow, I just noticed that I've been lagging behind by about two and a half minutes. <laughs> Oops, <laughs> glad you're caught up now, VNTXX. This export file is a Godot resource? No, seems like it could be loaded with the resource loader. Yeah, um, it could probably, but this is so simple. Like, we, I'm just going to do it this way. <laughs> I'll put this on, on, on GitLab and, and we can continue to improve it later. I just want to get it like working and we can always make it better later. Okay, so we want a line, which file get line. And does does Godot let us do regexes? No, it doesn't even matter. We don't even need to do a regex. We just need to check if a string contains, uh, if it starts with string equals, or name equals. Uh, contains, or is there a starts with? Starts with. What do we got string function wise, Godot? So find possibly, we'll just sec check if it finds it at an index of zero. No, we don't have a starts. Okay, we'll do find. We'll do find. Finds an occurrence. Returns the starting position or negative one. Okay, so we need to find if it equals zero. Because we only care about lines that start with exactly name equals. If line find name equals equals zero, then that is a preset, which we'll add to our ret append. And we need to get a substring, and I always forget the arguments for that too. Oh, okay, so it's from and then len. So this should be easy. Uh, so from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And I believe that is all our code. Oh, I don't know if it's going to pack a new line in there, though. Um, is this line going to end a new line or not? Uh, da, 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 da. get line, or it's, it's, there's no get, or oh, I'm on string now. Okay, let's get back to file, get, get line, 
Oh, I'm still on string. Get out of here. Get out of string. There we go. There's file. Returns the next line of the file as a string. Text is okay. It doesn't actually tell me. We'll have to we'll have to look and see. So, uh, where are we gonna do this? Where are we gonna do this so we can test it? I guess I'll put it. I'll put it here. This is not where we really want it, but this will print it out. Um, what's the method called? Get export presets. Get export presets. Quest and WebXR. So got it. Begins with uh, Aknakos. Thanks for finding that for me. Um, VNTXX. I've tried it and it works pretty great, but I can't be bothered to switch applications, so I'm sticking with the internal editor. Ah, okay. Yeah, I I um I guess I use the internal editor because it's easier. Um, but yeah, I I've been using VS Code a lot for C plus plus, and it's been it, the 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 internal editor has no Vim uh, bindings, and I like Vim is how my fingers work. Uh, whereas VS Code does, but it's terrible in VS Code. The Vim emulation is bad, but it exists. It's there. <laughs> I'd rather use it than not use it. Okay, so. Can we put a project setting that is a dropdown? Can we even do that? I guess that would be the hint, right? So let me go look at some other hinty things in here. Um, so here's a dropdown, driver name. The thing that I'm that's worrying me is like when do we refresh this list? You know? Um when do we refresh the list? Well, let's see if we can get it in there in the first place. Uh so what what is the hint stuff to say we have a set of options? And what's the best way to look that up? Um I guess I'm just going to chase down driver name because that's the easiest thing to come up but if someone has a better reference on the hint junk I would appreciate it uh, maybe I'll even poke around a little bit um, in the docs we search here for hint hint range hint enum that could be it so how does that actually look though in this context would it be like hint enum and then a list of stuff uh let's just let's just try okay this um this method that i that i copied isn't really going to work great um because it is too formulaic, uh, we'll do make our, no, our own add project setting. We just have a single setting, and we'll just start with name equals what are we going to call it? Um, maybe editor export preset on save, and then we'll do some of this stuff. Um, and we don't have a default value really. So if it has setting, set setting, name, empty, set initial value to empty, ah. and we need to do our own hint stuff, which is going to be here, our info. Um, so name equals name, type equals, I forget what enumeration that comes from. So type string, and then we need to put in some kind of hint. Oh, I didn't find anything. Does it need to be name with lowercase n? 
No, it's uppercase driver name. Oh, you know why? Because uh, those are derived directly from the property name. So this would actually be in the code as driver driver name. That'll find it. Um, how does this hint stuff work? I always forget. Maybe the docs here. Property hint. Oh, it only mentions. Oh, okay. So hint string. Oh, so maybe the original method would have worked. I thought we we're gonna need to put a different property. Is it property hint a num? Okay, never mind. I just deleted a whole bunch of code we could easily have kept. Let's um. Okay, we're gonna make a new method which is like. Set up project settings, and it's going to use this method that I stole from the Godot rollback netcode add on. Its type is string, its property hint is a num, and the list of options just for testing purposes can be test one and test two. And this is cool. This we can keep, right? And then this just needs to go. And we need a place to call this setup project setting, which I guess I'm going to do an enter tree. And let's, uh, we'll enable and disable the add on and see if that does what we need it to do in the project settings. So. Editor, export preset on save, and it gave us the number three. <laughs> uh, no, that didn't work. OK, wait, 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 wait. So a num maybe isn't the right thing, because maybe the problem is that it's trying to turn that into literally a um, like integer, as an a num would be. Property hints, what other hints do we have? Num file flags. It's done. I am just not sure. Is it just me of sometimes the undo redo within Godot doesn't work properly? Lost a bunch of code while making my add-on because the redo would put back code in a bad order. Hmm. I've definitely had some interesting issues with um with uh uh undo redo, but I don't know that I've had that one. Who is talking about uh trying Rider? So Rider, that's like the PHP storm equivalent thing, right? But for uh is Rider C sharp or C plus plus? I can't remember. I like the the Vim uh, emulation in PHP Storm. It it works good enough for me, but it's certainly not perfect. What if we say none and then put test one, test two? See if that does anything interesting. Project settings, general, export, saved. A zero now. <laughs> ah, what can we do here? Um, so variant string modes, a num, and then it gives these. But like when we tried to do that, it just didn't work. Gave us a number three. So type string. Let me just look at. I'm gonna look at how how uh, I did this in the other add-on. What what values I was using there? Maybe that'll give me some clues. Uh, 
so type int. Do I have type strings in here? I do have type string. I have a default. Oh, I think I just missed an argument. Type string default blank. Type hint enum. Okay, let's give this a try. Hey, hey, okay, there we go. Now we need to make sure that this um, is a list of the uh, export presets, um, which is like not a nice way to do that when you have arrays, uh, which sucks. Um, can we like convert from a pool string array to... Um, Cool string array. Can I construct one from an array? Sweet, I can. Okay. Um, get export presets. And then here we can do join comma. Okay, so we'll say var export preset preset options equals that. Export preset options. And then now we can go to do the disable re-enable dance. And it's not, wait, do I have to open the skin? Hey, there we go. It there in quotes. <laughs> well, you know what, actually, like we need them in quotes to send them to the command line. <laughs> Maybe we just keep them in quotes. Maybe we just keep them in quotes. Is that a problem? Are they like double quoted if we go look in the project settings? Where is this project? Um, what did I call this project? No, this isn't Toy Racer. It's not a new project. Uh, project Godot. So let's look for export on save. Oops. I'm sure that I called it something export on save. Why don't I see it? Oh, export preset on save. So I'll just search for on save yeah <laughs> in a double set of quotes okay we'll trim those quotes is there a, a fun trim class on string oh, i missed some stuff here yeah rider focuses on game dev so mostly c sharp okay and c++ for unreal oh snowpick in case you don't know there is a plugin called plugin refresher which uh helps a bunch on refreshing your plugin under development i use it all the time yeah that's aaron winters plugin i think I saw it. Um, I've never used it. Uh, maybe I should have gotten that earlier on in this, but we, we only have three minutes left. <laughs> ah. Yeah, I, when I work on uh, plugins, usually what I try to do is work on them not as a plugin as long as possible, and then just like make them be a plugin later. This one's kind of unique in that it's all happening within the plugin class. Like there isn't like a separate external thing that I'm binding to. Um, what was I doing? Uh, I was trying to trim, trying to trim some stuff. Is there a trim? Trim prefix, trim suffix. Do we have one that does both at once? Uh, it would be sweet if we did. Strip edges. Uh, but it's only those. I can't strip a particular string that I want it to strip. Strip floats, or split floats. Split, simplify. Okay, maybe we just do trim, prefix, trim, suffix. Or we know it's always going to start and end with a quote, so we just go one more forward. Does that make sense? Um, so down here, when we're not down here, up here, we're reading the file. So instead of starting on 5, we start on 6. And then we say line uh, length minus six which might be right or might be wrong i am unsure uh i used to have this printing out stuff for me print um get export presets okay one more 
where is that code I was just editing? Minus seven. And that got rid of the quotes. We are good. Let's delete this again. I hear an alarm going off somewhere in the house. I hope that doesn't mean I need to do something. <laughs> uh, okay, let's take a quick peek. Um, see if this works. We can pick between Quest and WebXR. We will pick, oh, you know what? I also want nothing to be an option. So let's make sure that nothing is a possible option. Um, uh, probably explicitly have to tell this to be a string. Let's see if that works. Uh, you're gonna share. Okay, so nothing is an option, and then Quest or WebXR. We'll pick WebXR, and then down here, we will do. Um, project, project settings, get, what is it, get setting, um, and what did I call it? I'll make another constant for this. So const uh, export preset setting, and we're going to copy it from here. Export preset setting, export preset setting, empty string, and we'll say if preset name equals empty string, then we return. We're not doing nothing. Too many arguments. Why, what are too many arguments? Okay, so set setting has a default, but get setting doesn't. Okay. Uh, what does that mean? So get setting returns the value of the setting. So can it be null? Can it be something else falsy? Um, okay, I guess we'll have to say if not preset. We'll see if that works. So right now it's still set to exporting WebXR. And if I go here and change it to nothing, it does nothing. All right. Seems extra slow that time, but it worked. I think this is I think this is enough to like say this is an MVP here. I think this is good. Um, it's basically the end time of the stream, uh, but like off stream, I'll make a, a GitLab repo. If anyone's interested in this, I'll put the link later into uh, on the Discord on the Snowbike Games Discord. Um, and I don't know before before the deadline. When is the deadline for the jam? In the next two days and 16 hours, I'll submit it. And uh, we'll say I participated in the jam. I really wish I could have put more time into this and like done something really cool. But I'm just happy to, to, to do anything to up the entry numbers a little bit. And like, uh, this is a cool jam. I hope this jam happens like 100 more times. This is really sweet. Let's see what I missed in, uh, in, in chat here. Anything? There's a replace all or replace all or something like that. Hmm, I'm not sure what Agnacos was saying about the replace all. But yeah, uh, thanks everyone for coming to the stream. This was a good one. I felt like I wasn't embarrassing myself the whole time, like I was on the one where I was doing math last week. Uh, but yeah, <sighs> hope everyone has a great weekend. And I, yeah, I guess I'll see you on Discord or I'll see you um Next week on the next stream, I'm going to try and get my next rollback video posted on Monday. I hope. Maybe. We'll see. And uh, yeah. Thanks, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye.